Hey everyone, this is Chris, sometimes known as LOTR Deck Tech, bringing you this week's new deck. It is a two hero secrecy build that is, if you have seen any of my other secrecy decks, a little bit weird. I don't have leadership, I don't have lore. This could be a pretty big challenge for us. <sighs> but let's walk you through the deck and what it's trying to do, and then we will jump right into a game. So, as I mentioned, it is a two hero deck. Our first hero is Arwen, and we're gonna play a little bit attachment heavy. And the goal for Arwen is Light of Valinor and two Rivendell Blades, so that she can be sort of a big beater. Obviously, she can only do one damage with the Rivendell Blades by herself, which is a bit of a challenge in dealing with some enemies, but it does mean that any other ally we have to boost her attack is going to make a huge difference. Our second hero is Tactics Eowyn, who's going to help us be really low threat, pay for those Rivendell Blades, and her attachment package is Strider and Golden Shield. Obviously, while Strider is on Eowyn, and you don't have too many characters in play, that means that she gets a big willpower boost, so if you get that golden shield going early, you have a huge defender out of the gate who is also questing for six. And that's it for the heroes. Like We have a few other attachments that might go on them, a few other cards that might affect them, but those are the big ones. We have Elven Light and Faux Hammer as our sort of main draw sources. Uh, we also don't have any lore, so Ancient Mathem is in there too, just to sort of fill. I don't have a lot of secrecy cards either, it's just Kelduin Traveler and Resourceful. Obviously these cards are fantastically huge impact if you're paying one resource for them. But there aren't a lot of other good options. And, you know, at the end of the deck we're sort of filling in with miscellaneous allies. Uh, we have Treebeard. We have Gandalf, we have Guardian of Rivendell, they're all easy to pay for, they all have good combat stats to sort of back up our heroes, they all have big health pools, and you know, there's some other miscellaneous things in there. At the end, uh, White Council is sort of the standout here, uh, it can be backup card draw, it can shift resources around, it can surprise ready a hero if we need, say, to get more out of the Eowyn massive attack turn. And that's basically the deck. So let's jump into a game and see how it does. All right, we are going to be going up against the Hunt for Gollum today because I haven't played this quest in such a long time. Uh, everything is all set up. This is my opening hand, which is, uh, let's be honest, it's bad. <laughs> But I already took a mulligan, and it did not get any better, so we're going to stick with it. My initial setup and counter card reveal is Hunters from Mordor. Uh, so th this could be gross. This could be really, really gross. Well, let's just get started and see how we do. The only thing I can really play right now is Rivendell Blade, but I think I'd rather save the resources and get down Treebeard next round. Uh, so we have to commit to the quest. Uh, before I do that, I should remember that Octagon does not automatically take off the 3 threat from Eowyn's ability. So we are actually starting at 15, which is good because it means we have a long time before Hunters from Mordor will have to engage us. I'm going to send both of my heroes to the quest. Uh, this is probably a little bit overkill, but you can get some nasty starts in this one. All right, old wives' tales. Just takes two resources. <laughs> Doesn't contribute any threat, so I make five progress. One, two, three, four, five. And now I have to trigger the response on the hunt begins. One, two, three. And one of these cards is gonna be revealed and added to the staging area. And the other two are discarded, great. I think I'm going to take the Eaves of Markwood. Uh, I don't have any encounter canceling anyways, so this is completely trivial. And the other two just go away. 
I will travel to the Eaves of Mirkwood because we can definitely clear that in the future. And uh, that's really all we're going to do. So next round. Well, I can drop my threat again. But what I really want still <laughs> is to save up and play Treebeard. And I haven't gotten any closer to that goal. Uh, so let's just send Eowyn to the quest for four. This is currently enough to clear the Eaves of Mirkwood right now. Uh, we'll probably add a little bit more threat, and I can Elrond's Council to get one more willpower if I want. Okay, yeah, second Eaves of Mirkwood is fine. I will play Elrond's Council. Drops my threat to 13, brings my willpower to 5, so we make one progress. We did quest successfully, so I have to do pick from 3 again. Alright, well I don't want Signs of Gollum yet. Um, yeah, let's take the old Ford and get rid of these other two. This is currently a zero threat location, so that is about as safe as it could possibly be. <laughs> let's move on to the next round. I mean, I really appreciate drawing all of the expensive allies and none of the sort of glue cards, but it is not as helpful as you might think. I will play Treebeard now. Uh, his combat stats are going to be huge while we wait to get our heroes online. And this does mean that the old fort is now one threat. There's five in the staging area. I want to make at least one. So I am going to send the team. Which is seven willpower. And this is probably going to be kind of gross. Oh, but sometimes it is Evil Storm, which does absolutely nothing for 21 more threat. So, my 7 up against 5 is 2 progress, 1, 2. And we did quest successfully, so we are going to trigger this response, 1, 2, 3. Oof. Clue or an extra hunter? Cannot deal with the hunters at all. And if it's a clue... It's a clue I basically have to take it now. I think I will take the extra hunters and we'll just bury these clues. Uh, we don't need them yet. And in theory, there's a bunch more in the encounter deck. I think there's like six. Uh, and I will travel to the Eaves of Mirkwood. Gotta get some of this threat out of the staging area. And <laughs> move on to the next round. Good news is we have a resource on Treebeard. And that is a fantastic card. I will spend one, thanks to secrecy, for a Keldewin Traveler. Allows me to look at this card. Uh, Alright, so it's going to have a decent amount of threat, and I'm going to have to engage it. That's okay. I can't do anything about it anyways, because it's not a location. Well, that just goes right back on the top. Could. I think I will. I will play a Dunedain Hunter now. Because it allows me to look at the top five cards of the encounter deck and pull out this enemy engaged with me. It's not revealed, so this effect does nothing. And at the moment, it is just an incredibly squishy goblin. Uh, I did shuffle the encounter deck, so that should be good to go. Means I no longer have any idea what's going on, but that's okay. Uh, do I want to play a Rivendell Blades now, or do I want to save? I think I should probably save. So, I'm going to send 9 to the quest, uh, leaving me just enough to kill these Goblin Town Scavengers. And hopefully enough to clear this Eaves of Mirkwood. So, the Old Ford. These are now both two threat locations. So, my nine up against eight is one progress. Oh, no, they are three threat locations because now I have third ally. Uh, okay, uh, instead of making that one progress, I have to raise my threat by one up to 16 but I didn't quest successfully so we don't 
do any more encounter card shenanigans, and I really need to do something about these old fords soon. But, conveniently enough, I can defend the Goblin Town Scavengers, kill them with the Dunedain Hunter, and next round we can just quest with everybody. So, let's get to it. Uh, Elrond's Council is good. I don't want to play another ally yet. I mean, I could double Rivendell Blades, but without the readying, that doesn't do me any good. I don't need more than one to deal with the Hunters from Mordor anyway. So at this point, we're just questing. Uh, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and Treebeard should have two resources. 12 committed to the quest, up against 10. Up against 12. Uh, I will play Elrond's Council, dropping my threat to 14, raising my willpower by 1, so I make 1 progress. Uh, Hunters from Mordor are going to be nasty until I can start dealing with them, but I have a long time before I have to. The big deal is these old fords. We'll just see how it goes. Alright, on to another round. Oh, this could be really good. All right, so let me discard a tree beard for a resource. One, two, three, four, five. Play a Gandalf. It does make both of these four threat locations temporarily. Uh, and I'm going to draw three cards. Okay, that is a good one. Let's play Strider on Aeon. I have too many allies for the bonus willpower, but she does still not exhaust commit to the quest, which is great. Uh, Tribute should have a third resource. Uh, and I just have to quest with everyone. 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 16. Up against 14 in the staging area. Boom, that shadow does nothing. I make two progress, one, two. I did quest successfully, so we play the little game. Uh, I will take Treacherous Fog because it does nothing and just gets discarded. And I will absolutely travel to one of these old fords. Not gonna engage an enemy. Uh, at the end of the round, Gandalf will go away, making both of these now three threat locations. And I'm ready to move on. Okay, the Galadrum Weaver is nice. First things first, let's put a Golden Shield on Eowyn so that I have a big, beefy defender for at least one attack. Treebeard has an extra resource. And I think at this point... No, I don't want to play a Galadrum Weaver right now because she doesn't actually contribute to the quest. And shuffling Gandalf in is nice, but not essential. All right, so I am up against nine in the staging area. Eowyn is currently six willpower. If I can send nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 to the quest, uh, this will probably clear the Riverland location, the old ford but hopefully not push me on to the next stage. We shall see. Banks of the Anduin is a bit of a softball. So that is 10 with my 13, so one, two, three. I believe we advance before we do this effect. Not 100% sure, I'm just gonna do it. Uh, at the beginning of the quest phase, now we have to play a little game. And I get to travel, which is going to be the old ford for sure. I could kill the hunters from Mordor right now. Uh, defend with Eowyn. Seven attack with these two. Oh, it's so close. All right, let's let's wait till we get some Arwen online, uh, or I could play another Dunedain hunter next round. All right. Let's just move on. Treebeard gets an extra resource. Foehammer, you would be so good. Eventually. 
Uh, is it worth losing the willpower boost right now in exchange for more attack? There is seven in the staging area? I think so. Uh, so let's play a second Dunedain Hunter. The top five cards of the encounter deck. Grab a Hunters from Mordor! <laughs> At least it's not revealed, and we don't have too many clues, so these hunters are not all going to turn into six threats, six attack enemies, or anything crazy like that. But okay. I did not add a resource to Treebeard this round. No, wait, yes I did. Can't count, apparently. Alright, so Treebeard has his resources. I could play Guardian of Rivendell. It might be worth it. Uh, but I think I'm gonna hold on. Eowyn can definitely defend. I can almost certainly not reveal another enemy. So let's quest. I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Up against seven, probably nine in the staging area. Uh, let's make it 11 committed to the quest. I will probably have to pay to ready Treebeard, but that's okay. First things first, we play a little game and pick one of these. Uh, I'm not going to pick Old Wives' Tales, so we pick Evil Storm, which does nothing. And now my encounter card for the round is Flooding. Doomed One, Surge, into Old Wives' Tales, which costs me two resources, but otherwise does nothing. Uh, and this Flooding does not remove any progress, because there isn't any. All right, so I sent 11 up against 6, 7. <laughs> That's 4 progress. 1, 2, 3, 4. Old Ford is gone. I will travel to the banks of the Anduin. I will not optionally engage an enemy. I will just defend with Eowyn using Golden Shield to give her 5 defense. Okay. All right, Hunters from Mordor is in the staging area because I don't have any clues. Uh, you know, honestly, if I had a little more willpower, there would be a decent chance that I would just be able to quest past them, but I don't think that's going to work out. Uh, good news, there's only five Hunters from Mordor in the encounter deck, so at worst, there can only be one more. Uh, and then we move on to the next round. We are still in secrecy, so I can play this resourceful. Uh, at this point, I'm going to put it on Eowyn, because just based on the cards in my hand, I have more tactics than anything else. Treebeard gets a sixth resource. And at this point, I will pay one to play Galadrim Weaver, shuffling a Gandalf back into my deck. All right, eight in the staging area, so I'm going to send three, <laughs> seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. And first things first, we play a little game. Uh, I'll take Misty Mountain Goblins instead of Gladden Fields. And the encounter card for the round is River Ninglore, which is going to keep us slow, but that's okay. All right, I sent 12 up against 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It is a tie. I am forced to engage the Misty Mountain Goblins. I think I will optionally engage Hunters from Mordor. So I get one and one. Both get shadows. Um, I don't want to take an undefended attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to defend the Hunters with Eowyn at 5 defense. That's totally the wrong attachment, but that's okay. Alright, when revealed, remove all progress. That does nothing. Eowyn takes no damage from that effect. Uh, Misty Mountain Goblins. Alright, let's use two of Treebeards to ready him and defend. No shadow effect there, so that is no damage. I need... Treebeard, 
and both of these to kill the hunters from Mordor. And Treebeard again to kill the Misty Mountain Goblins. They did remove one progress, but that's okay. And we're a little better off now than we were in the previous round. So let's go. Uh, and we are at 20 threat. Eowyn gets an extra resource. Treebeard gets one, two. Ooh, if I save, I can play Legolas, who is really good. Because he will help me draw cards and is enough to guarantee that I can kill hunters. Or I could play Guardian of Rivendell now and get the same benefit. Um, yeah, let's do that. One, two, three plays a Guardian of Rivendell. Discard a Golden Shield. Uh, and this Foe Hammer I might never ever get to use. The Gandalf might be a better choice, but I think I'd rather have the Gandalf for sort of possible questing needs rather than this Foe Hammer for more card draw. And now we move on to the quest phase. Uh, six, seven, eight against me. We're gonna have two cards, so it'll probably be like 12 again. So we're gonna send seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, do I need Treebeard? These two are eight, so send 12 to the quest. First things first, play a little game. Um, These cards are revealed, yes. Okay, I think I'll take Treacherous Fog, uh, because it only adds one threat. And then our actual encounter card is the West Bank. So, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Committed to the quest, and 12 against me means I make no progress. I can't travel, uh, but I can engage one of these hunters from Mordor. Who I will defend with Eowyn, who takes no damage. And then, as I so conveniently calculated last round, three, six, eight is enough to kill one. <sighs> We're slowly getting there. Uh, the drawback, of course, is that the locations are building because I apparently cannot clear this Banks of the Anduin. And now we're out of secrecy, for all that that matters. There's a card I've been looking for. Alright, I will cycle Oven Light to draw a card. Elrond's Council is going to get me back into secrecy, for all the good that does. Might as well spend one to put a Rivendell Blade on Arwen. Uh, there's a good chance I will see Light of Valinor soon, and I still have enough resources to play Legolas next round. So let's quest. Uh, there is nine in the staging area. So I will send three, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And I have Elrond's Council. So, first things first, little game. Uh, let's take Misty Mountain Goblins. And for the real card, False Lead. Which does nothing except surge to an extra West Bank. So I have sent 12. Uh, 6, 12, 14. Well, might as well play Elrond's Council to make my willpower 13 and drop my threat to 18 because I failed the quest by one <laughs> and I have to raise my threat by one again. I do have to engage Misty Mountain Goblins. I can defend, defend attack to clear out the hunters. So, okay, I will optionally engage hunters from Mordor. Forced to engage Misty Mountain Goblins. Shadow, shadow. Uh, let's defend Misty Mountain Goblins first, just in case. Okay, this progress token is gone. Guardian of Rivendell takes no damage. Eowyn will defend this hunters from Mordor. Nothing. And... 1-2, Reddy's Treebeard. 10 total is enough to kill Hunters from Mordor. And this Misty Mountain Goblins can stay. Uh, its threat is out of the staging area, and I should be able to deal with it and the second Hunter next round. So I think we're in pretty good shape. 
So let's move on. And I am at 20 threat again. So if I had drawn a secrecy card, I could play it, but I didn't. Uh, let's cycle Oven Light to draw one. Boom, there is a Light of Valinor. Now I wish I still had my Faux Hammer, but that's okay. Spend four for a Legolas. I think I'll probably play this Guardian Rivendell next round. So, we're, uh, we're looking pretty good. Two, four, ten in the staging area. So I will send seven, eight, nine, ten. Ugh, this could be bad. Eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen. I think I will not clear out a hunters from order of this round. I'll send my 14 up against 10. Play the game first. Hmm. Do I want the clue or the hunter? I think I'll take the hunter. Because the clue would require another encounter card. And the real encounter card is Eastern Crows. Into Eastern Crows. Into Pursued by Shadow. Which raises my threat by 2. All right, two, four, six, 12, 13, 14 is an exact push. Uh, I am at 22 threat, so I will optionally engage in Eastern Crows. Shadow, shadow. Uh, let's defend Misty Mountain Goblins. Okay, no damage dealt to heroes, no progress to remove. I think I have to take this Eastern Crows undefended, which does nothing but put one damage on Arwen. And then, one will shuffle the Eastern Crows back into the deck. Three, four is enough to kill the Misty Mountain Goblins, and because I use Legolas, I draw a card. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we're, we're a little stalled right now, so let's move on to the next round. Still only 23 threat, which is pretty good, and I have double uses of Treebeard this round. So, first things first, uh, draw with Elven Light. Ancient Mathem would be good if I could clear a location. Uh, so I think what I need this round is one, two, three, play another Guardian of Rivendell. Uh, discarding White Council, and uh, let's keep Ancient Mathem just in case. I'll get rid of... No, you know what, get rid of Ancient Mathem. I'll spend one for another Rivendell Blade, even though it's kind of useless. We want them eventually. And I have to commit a bunch of characters to the quest. 6, 12, 13 in the staging area right now. Only going to be able to deal with one enemy. So, 3, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, uh, 16. <laughs> so I'm banking on defending with Eowyn. Play our little game. Um, surge or Surge, doesn't matter. So we surge into Gladden Fields, and the real encounter card is Misty Mountain Goblins. Uh, that adds five, makes the staging area 18. No progress is made. Can't travel. Well, optionally engage Eastern Crows. Uh, I forgot to tick up my threat by two because of failing to quest. Still only at 25. So I have a ways to go before the Hunters. So, Shadow, Shadow. Let's defend Misty Mountain Goblins. Take no damage. No progress to remove. Uh, Arwen can defend Eastern Crows. Taking no damage. 
and Legolas is enough to kill the Eastern Crows, shuffling them back into the deck and drawing me a card. All right, next round. I could have spent two off of Treebeard in order to kill the Misty Mountain Goblins, but I don't know if that was worth it. One extra on Eowyn, one on Treebeard. Well, let's pop this jeweler into play, uh, discarding Ancient Madlam and Rivendell Blade. I will cycle Oven Light to draw another card. White Council doesn't really help. That's okay. All right, uh, let's quest again. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. And we have, at the moment, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 in the staging area. Play a little game. Uh, sure, River Ninglore. Because I think I'd rather have the location than an extra enemy. So these Misty Mountain Goblins get discarded. And the real card is a clue which is guarded by Eastern Crows, which surges into the eaves of Mirkwood. And now the Hunters from Mordor are each four threat enemies. <laughs> uh, all right. So time for counting. One plus nine is 10. Uh, plus another 10 is 20. 24 in the staging area. I sent 17, so my threat is going to go up by 7 to 33, which is just enough not to have to engage a Hunters from Mordor. Uh, but I think I'm going to take one anyways. Uh, well, I have to take Eastern Crows for sure. So, yeah, let's engage Hunters from Mordor. Forced to engage Eastern Crows. Can't do anything about this mess of locations. Shadow, shadow, shadow. All right, Eowyn is going to defend the Hunters from Mordor, taking no damage. Uh, Arwen will defend the Misty Mountain Goblins, taking no damage. Eastern Crows, I'm going to be bold and take undefended. Our enemy gets plus one, so that is two damage, which has to go on Eowyn. All right, and now we fight back as best we can. Uh, I'm gonna use Eowyn's ability, raising my threat by three to stand her back up and give her 10 attack, which is enough to kill a Hunters from Mordor. Legolas is one, kills an Eastern Crows. Uh, I did not shuffle that back into the deck. And Treebeard, 1-2, one, one, readies himself, and kills Misty Mountain Goblins. That's all the enemies gone. I just need something. <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is, but it's probably not to be stuck with all these locations. All right, on to the next round. That's not a bad one. Uh, I will cycle Elven Light to draw a card, put a Jeweler into play for free, discarding Strider and Elven Light. Uh, Arwen should have an extra resource, and so should Treebeard. And I will 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, play Gandalf. Do I want damage on the Hunter? Or do I want to draw cards? Or do I want to drop threat? I think at this point I have to drop threat and be sort of hopeful. Uh, down to 32 means that maybe this can work. Uh, there is 19 in the staging area. <laughs> uh, all I have to do is not fail to quest and kill this hunter, presumably. So, three, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 20, 21, 22. Uh, and I will need... So this is 22. Uh, I have 3, 7... Eowyn is actually good enough. Alright, so send my 22. Play our little game. Can't pick Treacherous Fog. Uh, that is... Literally death. So I have to pick East Bank, which comes over here. Brings us up to 22 in the staging area. The real card is Banks of the Anduin. 23. <laughs> All right, I failed to quest by one, raising my threat. I cannot travel, it's all locations. So I optionally engage Hunters from Mordor. They get a shadow card. A1 will defend at four defense. Oh, oh, that is nasty. Uh, that is all my allies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> all right. And in case that wasn't clear from how this is going, that is a horrible, crushing defeat <laughs> in the hunt for Gollum. Uh, and I think some of that is my fault. Uh, I didn't push the hunters out sort of early enough and once you get to this stage of the quest where you are revealing two encounter cards per round if you're not clearing locations they just stack up over and over and over again and the deck is geared more towards fighting than questing sort of on the assumption that in general in most quests you get to the point where you have a relatively empty staging area maybe one or two enemies in there that you don't want to deal with and you just sort of remove one card every round, whether by questing through the locations or picking off weaker enemies. And, you know, in that way, you sort of stay ahead of the curve. And in this quest, you can't do that. And a really miserable shadow effect just completely ruined whatever chance I could have had. <laughs> and that's the video for this week. <laughs> All right, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed, and maybe I'll try this deck again in the future. Thanks for watching.